Hello everyone, I am Sevens, and this is Brute Force Guide Module 6.0, Critical Thinking Concepts, being the point zero of it. In this module, we will be looking at a whole array of different things, uh, but using critical thinking skills. Now, if you've seen previous episodes of uh, the Brute Systems Guide, I don't really do a bunch of sciencey stuff. So these concepts that I'm going to be talking about are things that I feel are good to kind of get your mind into thinking about as you work on your ONI base. So there's a lot going on in this screenshot right here. But we're going to keep things really, really simple. Um, in this very first episode of this module, we're going to be looking at just examples of concepts to expand your way of tackling problems and things in your ONI playthrough. Not everything is something that you will be able to just seamless, seamlessly copy from what I'm doing but it will at least get you th to think in a way beyond um, just like going from A to B. It'll be like going from A to B to C to D, stuff like that. So what are we looking at? Well, even if you don't know what a lot of these machines are, or if you do, the basic gist is we have this whole building right here. This I think is a good place to start. And these are electrolyzers, and you give them water, and they produce both oxygen that goes down and hydrogen that goes up, and they stay in this room. The issue, the problem that we're trying to solve is that the uh, oxygen that they produce comes out currently at about 45 degrees Celsius which is problematic. Now, moving up here, we have a cool slot. Huh, that always gets me. We have up here a cool slush geyser that currently emits uh, polluted water at negative 10 degrees Celsius. Now, this polluted water, um, if I wanted to make it into regular water using a water sieve. One of the issues that would happen is as it would go up and go in, let's pretend this polluted water right here actually says minus 10 degrees Celsius. As it goes over and turns into regular water, that regular water would break the pipes because it is uh, too cold. Polluted water can be around negative 20-ish degrees and it's okay, it can stay as a liquid. However, regular water would turn into ice at about 0.6 degrees, so that won't work. So what did I do instead? Well, I took this right up here where the geyser is, and I brought this pipe, and it goes along all the way, and eventually it makes its way here. Now, I fast forward a bit, and here's the negative, you know, now it's negative 5 degrees. Uh, the reason for the difference in temperature is that it passed off some of its chill in a different area, but the same example will still work. So we have this polluted water that is right here, and we have the problem of oxygen being at 47 degrees Celsius. So instead of me looking at this problem without any critical thinking at all, I might simply be like, well, I don't know what to do with this oxygen that I'm making, so I'm just going to pump it into my base. And then with this, it would be like, well, I want to turn this into regular water or do whatever with it, so I'll, I'll just dump it somewhere and not worry about it. Instead of doing that, what I did was I combined both of these problems into one solution. The polluted water from the cool slush geyser that I showed you above is making that passively. I don't have to do anything except wait for it to make the polluted water. When it's dormant, it won't do it, but when it's there, it'll keep making it. So it's, 
it's uh, as an isolated thing it's all positive benefit so I should use the polluted water more than just for the water itself I'm gonna use it for how cold it can get now the oxygen is being sent in these three combinations of pipes right here one two three and as it makes its way it's built out of gold amalgam radiant pipe it's put in a metal tile room that is insulated and it goes along this way and this way and this way at the same time I have and now I'm gonna unpause it I have this polluted water that is cold and it's making its way into these tiles as well and what you can see is the water that it, the polluted water you can't see it but you could see the temperature if you see the mesh tile you see it going down you see it turning green this is tapping a little bit into the heating and other modules I have like module one that I recommend checking out but I'm critically solving this beyond just I'm going to use polluted water and I'm going to just use oxygen I am taking the chill of the polluted water and when it finishes it, when it goes all the way here it gets to about seven degrees and then I pump it out down 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 and I even use more of the chill as well right here and then eventually I will have it go up to um, the water sieves or wherever else I put it um, and at the same time if we look at the oxygen it's 50 degrees here following this along it becomes 40 and then 36 and then 25 22 and 16 and then 25 and then these you know these also chill uh, pretty easily and they go out so it's important to take as much advantage of everything as you can and this is an area that I'm also trying to improve on as well it's far too easy to just be like polluted water must do this oxygen must do that um, to expand upon this I have this cool salt slush geyser which right now it's dormant so we're not gonna see anything but it produces brine at negative 10 degrees Celsius I also use this liquid pump and the same pipe to pump in brine and you might be like well is mixing liquids in the same pipe a good idea generally it's not but what I do is I bring the brine as well down to here and it'll also chill this so if the polluted water from that geyser is not active then I get the chill from the uh, cool salt slush geyser instead and then eventually it'll make its way here and this is where I split it off so it's the same thing I'm taking advantage of the salt and how cold it is to then make it where it chills this room as well so my plan for the rest of this module is we will just look at these cool kinds of concepts in a non sciencey approach I have also figured that this module will be a great place to put information that doesn't exactly fit perfectly in one category or the other but yeah uh, that covers this example and in the next one we will talk about other ways to get multiple benefits out of different things all right see you in the next one